Now, the second step in the first stages of the teacher student relationship is to know your student. How can you inspire commitment from them and endorse engagement from them? If you can do all that, wouldn't it make your lessons more fun for you and more encouraging for you? Wouldn't you be more motivated if you had students that actually achieve those things? Well, every one of you has the power to be able to bring that out in your students. So your student's success and your success depend on how you interact with that student. It's essential for you to understand your style of teaching, interacting, or coaching, and then how you relate to that person. You may say, well, I only have them for 30 minutes. I don't have them for an hour. That is long enough. It can happen in an instant. If you have no idea how you come across or how you communicate or how you give feedback, you're going to find yourself at a disadvantage when you're teaching. See, the objective of what we're going to be doing today is to help you achieve these teaching goals and remove the obstacles or the roadblocks that get in the way, no matter what type of student you're working with. So today, let's get started. Let's see if there's any other ones that you would have or have or take away. It's kind of like another sorting process. Because even if you have a tie or your numbers are one or two apart, what that means is, is that you tend to and prefer to lead or you're more comfortable in one of the, the, the one with the highest number, but you draw heavily from the other one that's closest to you. So if you're tied or you're one or two numbers apart, your highest number is the, the style that you are, but you really pull from that one that's really close to you, okay? So is there anyone that uh, has any questions about yeah. <laughs> we outside and play. Everybody We would like you to divide yourselves into, I would say, five groups. And we're going to have a group right here, a group here, a group here, and a group here. Maybe six. Yeah, divide yourselves into six yeah, groups. Keep in so we get to be about 10 to 15 people in a group if we can. And then just go ahead, Megan. Start with the group. We have one group of presenters. We have one group of strategists. And then we should have six groups of mediators, correct? Give yourselves a pause here. We're going to take about three minutes for you to answer that and to list how it is that you and your people in your group, how you prefer to communicate. So go. Put your finger out in whichever way the wind blows, yeah. <laughs> How do you make a decision? <laughs> What's your process? If there is a process. <laughs> Not only one of these people, we also do That's actually a very honest answer coming from presenters. <laughs> Other people. <laughs> so, what are your pet peeves? What really gets under your skin? <laughs> Big lake. 
<laughs> and this list is usually your longest list. I've worked with, well, higher learning and different people in academia. And one of the challenges that I hear over and over again is that they don't know who their students are. Now granted, there's a big group of them, but they don't understand what their trials are. They don't understand what they face every day. They don't appreciate what it takes for that student to actually maybe get to that class. So there's that disconnect, and it doesn't need to be that way. So here's what I'd like to do. You're come up here, and uh, we're going to have Beth describe some things that can give us your answers. Um, let's. I'd like to have a director stand up. Now, before you do that, I'd like you to be thinking, everybody to be thinking about a student that you have whose style, based on what you kind of read here, may be different than your own. Start thinking about that. Start thinking about a student that you have whose style, and it, it can be an adult student, a young student. Now, I would like to have a director, so right director up there. If a director could stand up for me, I promise not to embarrass you. We have, okay, <laughs> we have a director over here. Now, you're thinking of a student, right? What style, now you're a director, so what student, what style is the student you're thinking of? A mediator, okay. So we have a director, and you can use your sheets, and then we have a mediator student. Now, what you do and how this is useful to you is you look up director and you see what their liabilities and their assets are. And then you find the mediator and you see what their liabilities and assets are. And then you look over and you say, how do I influence a mediator? Okay, because that's what you're doing. You, every one of you is a big influence in each of your students' lives. They talk about you all week long, whether it's, oh, do I have to go again, or I get to go again. They brag about you. They look forward to your stories. You have a major role in each of their lives. So when you look at how to influence them, it's very important that when you see how to influence a mediator, you look at your own liabilities and assets. Now, in that process, and I want everybody to help them out, and then how do you overcome those obstacles? First one we hear of is impatience. How do we overcome a director? How would a mediator work with a director? Okay. Information. That's exactly it. When you give a director information, they're automatically listening and paying attention because they're already ahead of you on thinking how they need to apply it. Thank you. Thank you. Giving them information, that's how you get over that obstacle. Another one is rise to their directness. How would you overcome that as a mediator? How would you overcome that obstacle? Speak faster than you normally do? Dress well? <laughs> Use big words. Simplify. Okay? Uh, directors, does that work? <laughs> Any other directors, will that work? Does that matter? Okay, are you not sure? When you're a director and the mediator was explained with a lot of information, that's helpful. If they dress well or they speak quickly and simplify, they just want results. So how do you do that? How do you overcome that urgency. See, directors have that sense of urgency. Would that be correct? And we're talking about your students. I'm sure you have students that, man, we're paying a lot of money for this, and I don't have much time, and I'm expected to be the fourth. You know, I'm expected to do this stuff, so come on, come on, come on. And so they end up placing a lot of the responsibility on you to go ahead and make it happen, right? Charge them hard. <laughs> you know, that is funny, but it's true. If you charge a director a lot more money, they're going to pay attention, they're going to come back, and they're going to value because money has a lot of value to them because they work hard for their money. Is that, is that, do you see what I'm saying to you? 
how that style works, and how that thinking process is. So if you have directors that are students, double their fees, and they will become a better, more attentive student. It sounds funny, but it's true, because they place value in that, because they say, I want the best. You know your presenters are coming. That's an obstacle, because you're wearing another hat, because they want to be entertained, because they think that that, when you entertain your presenter students, that's your, their way of knowing that you like them. Which, we know that doesn't mean that if you're instructing them, you're not entertaining them, you don't like them, that's not true. But that's how they perceive that, because of what's based on their style. What's another obstacle? Yes. You have to that. Okay, they don't follow through with what they've learned. They aren't going out and practicing it, but they come back. Lack of commitment, good, yeah, that kind of supports what you were saying too. Lack of commitment. That's a big obstacle for any of these, you know, when you match these styles. Lack of commitment. It may appear that they have a lack of commitment, but maybe it is that they aren't sure how to show their commitment. Because remember, and this is a key point, that student isn't only that style when they're spending those, those 60 minutes with you. That's who they are their entire day, okay? They don't just decide to become a presenter or a strategist or a director or a mediator when they're with you in that lesson. So that in itself is a major obstacle. So how do you overcome some of these obstacles? What's that? Avoid details. They're not interested in the details. So how do you do that as a golf instructor? How would you do that? Avoid details. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keeping it simple, 